And that appears to be it. Once again, thank you all. Yeah. It's been a great time. Oh, I'm sorry. Here, I'll give you the microphone. No, I don't want the microphone. I'll yell. Okay. I'm a behind the scenes person, not out front like Sage. I'm his mother. I'm very proud of what he is. Tonight, 
with my mother arguing with Paul Ewing. This is actually, uh, but anyway, I, I do want to go ahead and state for the record that uh, I wanted to, I'm very, very happy that for one thing, I've always been worried that feminists would never actually show up to one of these events, and they have, and they've actually, and now through my mother, they've spoken out. And um, one thing that was very interesting between us is that my, my mother being a feminist for very, very long has uh, created a, we've had a lot of interesting discussions when it became a men's rights activist, as you can imagine. And what's really, I'm really happy that she decided to take this opportunity to speak out. But one of the things that I'm hearing, and this is a very common point I hear, is that it, we are just bashing. It's a repeated point that we are not actually doing anything to educate the issues. We're not actually doing anything, we're just feminist bashing. But one thing that really, is, so this is a huge hurdle for a lot of people, and that is there is such a thing as a humanitarian non-feminist, and these people are very much afraid of feminists and the feminist perspective because of the documented attacks against them, and holding feminism as an establishment to scrutiny based on this. It's meant to be a criticism of the system and a desire for a change. And the people who say that we're not doing anything, can I, need I remind you that in terms of just my advocacy and Kennesaw State University men, we have been donating food to the CARE program to feed the homeless students on campus. Men or women can get extra food due to Kaysom's work and the excellent work of our members over here. Kaysom, ever stand up? the Women's Resource and Interpersonal Violence Prevention Center on campus with the intention of building a more equitable uh, interpersonal violence prevention center. And now, through the discussions on potential Title IX concerns, we are now building a men's center to complement the Women's Center on campus by late 2015 with the assistance of Assistant Dean Bob Maddox. And then, there's the uh, Resisting Aggression with Defense Force for Men that was, that was, in essence, through its execution, was suggesting to men that they are responsible for violence against women. And yet, there was no real, it wasn't strong enough suggesting that men are responsible for their own safety, and was operating on presumptions of male malice, and has created, and it, I, we even found, uh, our Secretary and Treasurer Stacey Evans found, that there was some sections of the manual that were flat out plagiarized from, I believe it was menstoppingrate.org, not credited. And so we wanted to have an investigation to build a more equitable self-defense course, and now we have the information to write a formal proposal to the police chief and the people he reports to, to build a more equitable self-defense course. <laughs> and we are, opening the dialogue. And people say, in light of all of this, you're not doing anything. You're just bashing feminists. You're just bashing feminists. You're bashing, bashing, bashing. But people forget that these are men. This is a movement that I belong to where men are feeling like they have been neglected and they are starting to assert themselves. And when they do so, when we have actually made progress, there's an interesting message that we send. I am a person with human, with feelings and thoughts of my own, and damn it, I am very upset with the representation I have been given and the representation I was promised, or rather the lack thereof, by the feminist movement. Yeah. Wanting a change, wanting a change is not bashing. Wanting a change is not in any way meant to be an attack on character. And it is disrespectful to the people who work hard and who contribute a lot. Who do, these are people who basically are roommates with you and are frustrated that they have to clean the dishes again because the roommate will never do it. These are people who are frustrated that they will never find the representation. And I'm sorry, folks, if you do not like this, but criticizing the feminist movement as a, as a political ideology that is subject to scrutiny just like any other, including our own, is not bashing. It's intellectual honesty and universal accountability, and you have to deal with it. I see one table not applauding. I see one table not applauding. 
Universal accountability is a function of making sure that you do the work to make sure there's an equitable function overall. And this is actually really, really, I think this is kind of a very timely moment. And I want to thank my mother for, again, coming in and talking about this and making that stand, because that is, the one thing we do share is that outspoken nature. And I love it. I love that outspoken nature that gets that out there. It's fun. It makes life fun. And that's it, folks. I tell you, the work that we've done has been incredible. And one of the things that I have faced here on this campus are allegations against my character. People have actually said in police reports that I was having fantasies about murdering women. Fantasies about murdering women. People were saying horrible things about me, all because I declared quite publicly that I am not a feminist and I wish to have an egalitarian, humanitarian society that is willing to work on neglected issues affecting men and boys. And I am quite disenfranchised when I hear that the people who are most proclaiming for egalitarianism, for diversity, are actually, yes, I'm sorry folks, they are behind it. And when you listen to the faculty these are faculty members that are doing this on this campus. These are faculty members that actually found a way to let their fear represent them. And it is fear. Their fear to execute into a, I guess you could say, a litany of investigations meant to abuse apparent credibility to make me look like a monster. And folks, and I gotta tell you folks, I'm not going to let it happen. I'm not going to let that bullying and those accusations of misogyny or bashing stop me from being a better egalitarian than the people in those departments. I, look, we at KSU Men have offered a, a specialization that has, I think, offer an A-level playing field. We don't offer an androcentric view of the world. We offer a specialization that was lacking to fulfill a need. And when we fulfill that need, and we know that we are offering something that is, in, a, in essence, not only filling that void, but also counteracting the people who have neglected to fill that void, and even sometimes oppose it, I think we get the right to say, you know what, this is bullshit. And you know what? You're full of shit. Yeah. That's not a personal attack. That's not a personal attack. It is scrutiny. Scrutiny. That is what intellectual honesty is. I became an anti-feminist. Not because I'm an anti-person, but because I'm anti-ideology. Because I am a person that strongly, strongly believes that when it comes to ideology, it is something that changes it's something that, become, whenever you're a person who's considered with evidence, you don't really have a set ideology. You can take little snapshots. It represents an ideology at the current moment, but it changes with the evidence, it changes with the times. But if you stick with a static worldview, you stick with the presumption that men have a preset level of privilege, that you have set step with, start with this presumption that men are malicious and oppressive, you end up with a static worldview that if implemented in policy, I'm sorry folks, men's human rights activists are gonna challenge it again and again and again. And again, deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Another glass of water has decided to rebel and now there's a puddle. So, <laughs> anyway, um, I did end up kind of uh, delivering a quick rant uh, during a time that is not for my speech. Um, but again, I didn't want, uh, Paul, I didn't want you to feel like you were in an awkward posi position because you were uh, going against my mother. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's going to be a, uh, okay, I do appreciate that there's a, that, but there's going to be a Twitter storm over this. This is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. But um, this, this was something, folks. <laughs> this was something. And again, I wanted to, uh, I do want to make a quick note before I put this up. We'll do a quick 30 minute break, then I'll do my real speech. Yeah. Um, I, again, have always said in my, in my articles on A Voice for Men, I really, really, really wish 
there were more feminists, even though they disagreed, to show up and voice their disagreement and just show up, period. And that happened. So at the very least, give my mother and KSUBS body a round of applause for showing up. That was fun. Uh, uh, do be prepared for some articles, Mom. <laughs> so uh, just that's just how the internet is. I'm sorry, but it'll it'll blow over soon. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, I will go ahead and say uh, this. I pretty much took the rest of Paul's time. Let's take a quick 30-minute break, and I'll come in and I'll tell you a little bit about the history of KSUM and where KSU is going in the future. <laughs>